Hi everyone, and welcome to Frugal Radio. On this channel, we explore various ways of enjoying the magic and mystery of radio waves on a minimal budget. If this is your first time here, a special welcome to you. In today's highly anticipated episode, we are looking at three budget software-defined radios. We will look at their features and technical specifications and compare their real-world receive performance. If you're just getting started in the world of software-defined radios, then hopefully this video is going to be a great help to you in making an informed decision about which SDR to purchase. Beginners are also encouraged to check out episode 1 in this series for a list of some of the amazing things you can do with a software-defined radio. If you find this video helpful to you, I would ask that you consider hitting the like button and perhaps subscribing to the channel to encourage me and let me know that it has been beneficial to you. With that said, Let's jump in and have a look at these SDRs. Generic SDRs like these are typically found on eBay and Chinese shopping sites. Sometimes they can be found at amateur radio rallies and hamventions for under $10. I bought my first one from Amazon for under $10 in 2013 and another two in 2014. They actually all still work but others have reported that theirs failed after around six months of usage. My units were based on the R820T chipset, but now you often see the newer version, the R820T2 in them. They are typically blue or black in color. The generic receivers are usually bundled with a small magnetic mount antenna, a remote control and a driver CD. They were originally designed as television tuners, and you may have success in using it as a digital television receiver if you don't want to use it as a software-defined radio. To use it as a wideband SDR covering 25 to 1.7 gigs, you will want to ignore the driver CD and utilize them with the Zadig drivers. Out of the three options we are looking at today, this is the only one that does not have a TCXO or Temperature Compensated Crystal Oscillator. That means the generic SDRs are not frequency accurate out of the box. You will have to identify the PPM value in order to use them reliably, and even then they will be prone to drift as they heat up with use. If you're planning on installing one in a location where the ambient temperature fluctuates, you will need to make regular adjustments to the PPM value. The generic dongles do not come with Bias-T capabilities, so you won't be able to use them to power external amplifiers or active antennas. The antenna connector is an MCX type on these dongles. In order to connect to regular SMA, BNC or other connectors, a pigtail will be required. This will be an additional expense, as pigtails are not supplied with the units. Generally speaking, the generic dongles do not come with any warranty. The RTL SDR version 3 dongle actually represents a significant step up from the generic SDRs. If you have antennas already, you can grab one for $25 using the link in the description below. Please note that there are a number of clones available on eBay that are not as good. So if you're buying one, make sure to get it from the proper source, either Amazon US, which is linked below, or the RTL SDR blog store if you're not in the United States. If you're new to the hobby or to SDRs, you might prefer to purchase the bundle. The bundle comes with a dipole base and four telescopic whips so that you can quickly make a tuned antenna on the fly. The bundle also includes a flexible tripod stand and a suction cup for use on a window, along with a coax extension cable. This is the gear I usually bring with me when operating portable, and the items from this bundle were used with all three SDRs in the later parts of this video. You'll notice that the RTL dongle has a wider frequency range. With this unit, it is possible to receive from 500 kHz and upwards. This means you can use it to receive the shortwave bands, known as HF, as well as the medium wave frequencies. Neither of the two other budget SDRs in this price range enable you to monitor that part of the spectrum, so if you are a shortwave listener or want to experiment with HF, this is the SDR to get. With that being said, the HF reception will not be as good as higher priced software defined radios, but you will be able to pick up shortwave broadcast stations, United States Air Force transmissions and number stations from around the world with a suitable antenna. An important feature of this SDR is the TCXO. 
This brings great frequency stability to the radio and means that the PPM values do not need to be calculated or entered or adjusted unlike the cheaper generic SDRs. You won't see a frequency fluctuation despite the ambient temperature changes. The RTL SDR version 3 also has a switchable bias T, another feature the other two radios on this list leave out. That means it's possible to add active antennas and filters, which really enhances the value of this particular SDR. I use the Bias T when monitoring L-band satellite communications, so if that's an area of the hobby you think you might wish to explore in the future, you'll want to make sure that this is the SDR you purchase from this list. When it comes to the antenna connection, here you get an SMA antenna. That gives you more flexibility for connecting to your existing antennas and means you will not need to use a pigtail. Instead, you'll be able to use regular antenna adapters. The SMA is a much wider used connector, so this is much better for the radio enthusiast. Lastly, you'll notice the manufacturer offers a two-year warranty. The most expensive of the three budget SDRs is the new Alec Any SDR Smart. Like the RTL SDR, it can be purchased as a standalone unit or as part of a bundle. The new Alec bundle includes a magnetic antenna base, one telescopic whip and two fixed frequency antennas. Frequency range on the any SDR is the same as the generic, 25 MHz up to 1.7 GHz. That means no HF or shortwave out of the box. If you don't mind taking the unit apart, and most likely voiding your warranty in the process, you can perform a hardware modification to enable HF. However, I would definitely not recommend this to beginners. Nualec offer a number of bundles which allow you to increase the frequency range and use the any SDR to monitor the HF bands. However, these push the price up towards $100. If you've got $100 to spend, I would be recommending a different SDR altogether. Like the RTL SDR version 3, the any SDR also features a TCXO, giving it excellent frequency stability out of the box. It is also important to note that the any SDR does not have a bias T. If you want a new Alec with Bias T, you must purchase the Smart T version of the dongle, which means spending an additional $31.95. It is also important to note that if you do purchase the Bias T version, you cannot switch off the Bias T, it is always on. That would be useful in some situations, but it is also quite a limitation in that it means you have to be more careful over your antenna choice and be aware that the SDR will draw more power from your USB ports all the time. Not surprisingly, the any SDR utilizes the more respectable SMA antenna connection just like the RTL SDR. It also comes with the same two-year warranty and the new Alex are manufactured in North America unlike the other two on this list which are manufactured in China. So when it comes to the feature list, the RTL SDR version 3 is a clear winner given that it offers a wider frequency range requiring no hardware modification and it has a software switchable bias T. But I wouldn't want to pick a software defined radio based purely on the technical specifications or feature list. I'd want to know how it performs in the real world. And that's what the rest of this episode is about. The first series of reception tests you will see here were carried out at my home location. This diagram represents the setup in my shack. I have a wideband antenna that is connected to an active multicoupler. The multicoupler takes the one incoming antenna signal and multiplies it across eight outputs running to various scanners and SDRs in my shack. The great thing is it means that each SDR is getting the exact same input from the antenna during each test. In other words, they are all on a level playing field with no irregularities in signal distribution related to antenna positioning and so on. This meant I could run all three SDRs simultaneously, allowing for a fair comparison between them. So let's get stuck in and see how each SDR performed on some signals received at my QTH. In the top left corner, we have the generic SDR. Next to it on the right hand side is the new Alec dongle. And in the bottom left, we have the RTL SDR. I have set the gain to full on each of the SDRs and you'll also notice that on the generic SDR a PPM correction of 88 has been applied to the receiver. Zooming in on the signals we get to look at the signal to noise ratio of each. The higher the SNR value on the screen the better the reception.
Here I reduced the gain to 33.8 decibels to monitor London information, which is actually a repeated signal from about 40 miles away. This makes it a good signal to compare the signal to noise ratio with. Golf Mike Indy Tower, just departed the gate now. Uh, going back to uh, Sarah, currently 4,200 feet on 1015. Requesting a basic service on 1 Delta 207 is active. Golf Mike Indy London Station, Danger 207, Hole Beach, range notified not active. So, Rooty G, your discretion, Squawk 1177, the basic service. Uh, uh, so, Delta 207 is not active. Score 1177, uh, basic service, and uh, what's the local QNH? Go find it. Go Captain QNH 1015. 1015, go find it. And what would be your routing to Ferret? Uh, I'm going to try and go for, um, I'm going to go to the uh, east around the Heathrow zone, and uh, I was going to try and go for a, a standard transit over the over the top, um, and I'm going around Vegas, go find it. Next, I tuned to a Tetra data signal that was showing quite a lot of deviation in received signal strength and tested that across the three receivers. A more distant Tetra signal was also examined. Next was a weaker data signal in the 450 MHz band. Next it was time to check the FM broadcast band. I reduced the RF gain to a suitable level and conducted the same test. That you um, are glad uh, that you listen to this program and in fact it'll enthuse you and make you want to listen to Six Music or these podcasts again. Um, how about you, Anna? I think it's the kind of thing that would be nice to have on in the background if I was, I don't know, baking or something and was an artist that I was interested in. Then, yeah, I think there's definitely some snippets in there that are kind of worth taking away. When the audio was routed to a virtual cable, all of the SDRs were perfectly capable of decoding Poxag pager transmissions and Flex pager transmissions. Next, I tuned to a marine band weather forecast and used that to check the signal to noise ratio of the received signals on each SDR. One decimal four minutes west, all NAVE inoperative. Wiki Zulu 705, Irish Sea, Eastern Park. Platform Delta Papa 4, 110-3, at position 53 degrees, 52.5 decimal five minutes north, 003 degrees, 33.7 three decimal seven minutes west, Foghorn inoperative. Wiki Zulu, Eastern Park, Walney and Walney Extension Wind Farm. The following perimeter voyage is unlit. West Cardinal Boy at 54 degrees, 06.6. The next set of tests was carried out in portable configuration. I hiked up to a viewpoint overlooking the city in order to be in an RF dense environment. At the site are four transmitter masts, each outputting high power signals over a large area of the country. While the high point would offer some DX capabilities, the nearby transmitters could potentially overload the software defined radios. This would be a good test of the ability to reject out-of-band signals. The setup consisted of the RTL SDR bundle telescopic antennas and flexible legged tripod mount balanced on a rock. The telescopic dipole was connected directly to each SDR being tested with the SDR being connected via a USB extension cable to the laptop. Each SDR was tested in turn without any adjustments being made between tests. In the case of the generic dongle, a pigtail was attached in order to allow connection of the SMA antenna coax. This was an ATIS broadcast from an airport about 5 miles away from the location. You'll notice two images breaking through into the signal. Between 230 and 31. 
Status signal was located at an airport further away and was much more difficult for the dongles to receive. This transmission was broadcast from a tower 104 miles away from my location. Next, a local DMR control channel data signal was tested. All the dongles were able to decode audio using DSD+. Control the hallway to search the code. Happy for golf three. Sorry, Connie, go ahead, man. Control the hallway to search the code. Lastly, the performance of digital radio was tested using the popular Vela software. Hybrid and fully electric. Search Daily's Hyundai. Every day. Rona, Rona, how are you doing? Not too bad, Johnny. Good, glad to hear it. Are you working? Are you out and about? Flying your kite? What are um, you doing? Um, um, South Pacific. No, West Age Story. In the human body, oh, where oh. are your metatarsals? So how would I rate each of these budget SDRs? Well, I would assign the generic dongle 5 out of 10. For very little investment, you can start having a lot of fun with radio. But in the real world listing tests, it simply didn't perform as well as the other two. The frequency instability is problematic because it requires periodic adjustment and the lack of extra features is something that would hold me back. I would give the RTL SDR version 3 dongle a 9 out of 10 because it received the signals very well, showed much less tendency to overload and it offers both bias T and HF reception. At this price point I think it deserves today's top score. If it had beaten the Nualec on more signal to noise ratio tests I'd have given it 10 out of 10. Lastly I would assign the Nualec any SDR Smart 8 out of 10. In frugal radio terms, it misses out because it doesn't offer HF reception or a selectable bias T. However, its general receive performance was the best of the three SDRs tested. If I was using it for VHF and UHF only and didn't want to experiment with HF or satellite signals, I would be very happy purchasing this new alike. As always, thank you for your support. It is really great to have you on the channel. I look forward to hearing how your SDR experiments go. But for now, I love you and leave you and wish you all the best. Stay safe out there. This is Frugal Radio, over and out. <laughs>